dear students assalamu alaikum and welcome to your online class i am dr sibila firdosi associate professor department of physiology in this lecture we are going to discuss about a very important topic and that is ovulation in the last lecture we discussed about the ovarian cycle and we now know that ovarian cycle had two phases one is the follicular phase and the luteal phase and in between these two phases an event occurred and this event is ovulation so ovulation by definition we can say that it is the rupture of the graafian follicle and discharge of the ovum in the abdominal cavity due to lh surge 14 plus minus 2 days before the onset of the next menstrual cycle so we know that at the at the end of the follicular phase we had a mature follicle one single dominant follicle which was known as the graafian follicle and this graafian follicle ruptures and it discharges the ovum in the abdominal cavity the ovum is surrounded by uh, the zona pellucida and corona radiata and then after this ovum is discharged in the abdominal cavity it is picked up by the fimbria of the fallopian tube and then uh, if there is a sperm then fertilization will occur and if there is no sperm then the ovum is actually then it discharges with the menstrual blood so let us see the me postulated mechanism of ovulation there is a postulated mechanism of ovulation which explains how this ovulation is actually taking place so about 2 days before ovulation the secretion of luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary gland increases markedly about 6 to 10 folds and this peaks 16 hours before ovulation so this luteinizing hormone is very important for ovulation and without this pre ovulatory lh surge ovulation will not take place and then uh, th what happens is there is rapid secretion of progesterone hormone from the follicles so two hormones are secreted in high quantities one is the luteinizing hormone and also there is rapid secretion of the steroid progesterone then from the theca externa cells the theca externa layer of the follicles we know that it releases a proteolytic enzyme and the name of this proteolytic enzyme is collagenase this proteolytic enzyme causes dissolution of the follicular capsular wall and weakening of the capsular wall so we need the follicles uh, had a capsule what which was formed by the theca externa and now the theca externa is secreting a proteolytic enzyme that is the collagenase and collagenase is responsible for the weakening and dissolution of the capsular wall this ultimately leads to degeneration of the stigma and on the other hand there is follicular hyperemia and secretion of prostaglandins there is increased blood supply to the follicles and the plasma transudation into the follicles which means that plasma is now entering into the follicles which is causing follicular swelling so we are two things are actually happening to this follicle one is follicular swelling and another one is dissolution and weakening of the follicular capsular wall and ultimately these two events working together leads to rupture of the follicle and when the follicle is ruptured we know that it has a secondary oocyte which is our ovum and then this discharge of the ovum surrounded by the corona radiata and the ovum is discharged in the abdominal cavity so this is the postulated mechanism of ovulation now how will we understand the how ovulation whether ovulation is taking place or not so now how will we understand whether ovulation is taking place or not so there are some indicators that we can follow through which we will understand the time of ovulation first is there is a rise in the basal body temperature and this happen this occurs about 0.5 to 1 degree centigrade rise in the basal body temperature and we have to record the oral temperature 
immediately after waking in the morning yeah, still when the patient is still in bed patient now when the person is still in bed then we have to measure the oral temperature and it will we will find that it is 0.5 to 1 degree centigrade increased than normal so this rise in the basal body temperature indicates that ovulation is taking place now you may question why there is a rise because there is the increased level of progesterone and progesterone we know is a thermogenic hormone so due to this thermogenic hormone progesterone there is a rise in the basal body temperature next there is some there may be peritoneal irritation and lower abdominal pain so uh, why this pain occurs because there may be a minor bleeding in the abdominal cavity from the rupture of the follicle next if we examine the cervical secretion we will find that it is thick and it does not form a fern pattern usually if the cervical secretion is thin it will form a fern pattern but during the time of ovulation the cervical secretion becomes thick and it will not form a fern pattern again if we examine the vaginal smear we will find that there is large uh, squamous cells and these squamous cells are acidophilic with small nuclei there is there will be increased in urinary gonadotropins so we can also measure the urine and see the level of the gonadotropins and we will find that there is a increased in the levels of gonadotropins and also uh, a peak in the estrogen output just before ovulation so these are the indicators that we will follow in a person to see whether the person is ovulating or not and why it is important to know ovulation because uh, if we know the time of ovulation then it, it will be helpful for family planning so it is important that every every female should be able to calculate her time of ovulation so another important thing that came into our discussion in this lecture is the LH surge so we know that normally the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone coming from the anterior pituitary and works on the gonad that is the ovary and when the ovary is secreting estrogen and progesterone this estrogen and progesterone usually gives negative feedback to the anterior pituitary and keeps the level of FSH and LH low but just before ovulation there is a peculiar positive feedback of this estrogen and it increases the level of luteinizing hormone 6 to 10 fold and it peaks 16 hours before ovulation and FSH secretion also increases 2 to 3 fold. So you see LH secretion increases 6 to 10 fold and FSH secretion increases about 2 to 3 fold and this LH is responsible for the final maturation of the ovarian follicle and ultimately ovulation and after ovulation when we know that corpus luteum is formed and this corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estrogen and these hormones then give negative feedback to the anterior pituitary which decreases the secretion of FSH and LH so usually and normally there is the negative feedback uh, to the anterior pituitary but just before ovulation the estrogen gives a peculiar positive feedback which increases the luteinizing hormone secretion 6 to 10 fold and this phenomenon of sharp rise of luteinizing hormone secretion is known as LH surge and this LH surge is also very important because without this pre-ovulatory LH surge ovulation will not take place so this is about ovulation but in some cases ovulation fails to occur during the normal menstrual cycle so normally we see that our menstrual cycle is about 28 days and ovulation takes place in the mid cycle but sometimes physiologically there is no ovulation and this is these cycles are then known as an ovulatory cycles and the physiological cause of these cycles are um, 
during the menarche you know what is menarche it is the onset of the first menstruation so 12 to 18 months after menarche the female may be an ovulatory because uh, her cycles may be an ovulatory cycles and before menopause menopause is the uh, natural and permanent cessation of the menstruation so 12 to 18 months before menopause there may be an ovulatory menstrual cycles and if the person uses oral contraceptive pills then the menstrual cycles are an ovulatory so this is all for today i hope i could give you a clear idea about ovulation which is very important for you to understand so thank you and allah Hafiz.